got a couple of things we're going to start off with tonight. Our normal news you can use, and then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, tricks of the trade. We're going to, I'm going to show you a kind of a unique uh, thing that you guys can use in your seller finance acquisition side business. So I don't know if you got my note, uh, Ash, about we'll need either a whiteboard or a like an Excel sheet. I did something. get your note, and I have one ready for you. All right, good. Well, first, I'm going to start with tricks, uh, news you can use. I'm sorry. Uh, news you can use today is, is going to be a, kind of a shocker. Um, you want to see how bad it is out there. You don't hear about this often, but the most expensive house in the United States is a home in Bel Air called The One. It's got its own name. It's almost uh, roughly 2.7 acres under roof. It's a huge property. It's in the um, residential area of Bel Air outside of Hollywood uh, in the Los Angeles County area. And this has been listed as the most expensive house in the United States. It was getting ready to go on the market for $500 million. Um, if it would have sold for that, it would be a record. However, uh, and this property had $165 million in loans and debt on it. So it had a ton of equity, right? Like everything else out there, property had a ton of equity. These guys went into default. Uh, they were unable to make their loan payment. Um, I don't know exactly what happened because the, the article that I'm reading on CNBC that came out this morning deals only with what's going to happen with the, the house itself and not what happened to the owner. But uh, nonetheless, the most expensive home in America is in default. Um, the home itself, because of the large size of the, the debt, it actually went into receivership. Uh, I think we've talked before, if you folks have seen the home equity buyout or uh, equity buyout clinic that we had, uh, we talk about California being a uh, non-judicial state. In other words, you don't have to go to the court uh, to get a um, foreclosure. You can just file it on the door of the house and then you can, at the auction, at the courthouse steps, you can go ahead and sell off the house. This, however, had some legal action applied to it, probably because the debt is so large. They forced the house into receivership and the receiver himself has said, we're going to list it at a fire sale price. Although it's not listed in the article uh, from friends down there, I understand it's gonna be a fire sale price of around 300 million instead of 500 million. So. You want to see major haircuts coming in the down the future in the down the road here on what's going to happen. This is uh, this is a real uh, canary in the mine shaft here, guys. So we'll keep you up to date and let you know what else is going for um, and what's happening across the country. But expect to see more deals like this uh, in the future. Uh, a lot of properties going on the market. Uh, a lot of properties in foreclosure uh, now that the default and the forbearance agreements have expired with the federal government. These lenders are aggressive at wanting to get their properties back. So this is gonna be the way of the future. All right, let's put our, um, our board up and I'm gonna show you a little tricks, uh, trick of the trade. We haven't done these in a while, but this is gonna be a cool idea that you guys can do um, out there in the marketplace. This was a particular property that we looked at recently and I think the, the loan, the existing loan on the property was about 120,000. So if you want to put that, list that for 120,000 and put existing loan. And um, these guys were willing to sell it for 150,000, um, subject to plus seller carry back. So that would provide $30,000 of seller carryback. And uh, maybe we can go up to the top and put that this home was worth about $280,000, uh, ARV, approximately $280,000. So it had a lot of equity in it. Uh, they were willing to sell it for 150 um, and they were willing to carry it back. However, 
of that $30,000, they wanted $10,000 of it up front. So in other words, they would carry back 20 and they wanted 10 cash. Right. Uh, house needed about $20,000 of work, approximately. So this would be a property that we would do what we call a subtail project on. We would buy it subject to, subject to plus the seller carry back, and we would do uh, the repairs on it, and then we'd turn around and sell it for 280,000. Here's the thing though, the, the $150,000 asking price was fine. The $120,000 existing loan that we would take subject to was fine. The $20,000, seller carry back and they were willing to wait until we sold it to get that money back that was fine um, however the the ten thousand dollars up front for cash because we were going to make twenty thousand dollars of repairs and probably make another ten thousand dollars of other expenses from uh, pg e and interim payments and interest and insurance and things like that we didn't want to pay the 10 up front cash so we proposed a deal where the seller would also finance that $10,000. And so what we were able to do is get the seller to take a thousand a month for 10 months on that $10,000 cash. Thousand per month for 10 months. So they got their 10 cash. They didn't really need it all up front. They thought they needed it up front but we positioned it where the $20,000 of repairs plus this extra 10,000 that we were gonna probably have to spend um, along with the hard repairs themselves and carrying costs and insurance and so on and so forth, um, that that 10 ate up the 10 that could have been there for them to get cash. And so they agreed. Uh, so we were able to finance the property itself 100% and we were able to basically finance the seller carry back at almost 100%, including the cash portion. And so this would be a trick that I would use uh, out there where you've got a property like this, it's got a clear uh, chunk of margin in there, big margin. Um, and the one thing, like I said, that uh, we didn't want to do, you know, could we have paid 10 up front and it would have still made sense? Yeah. But it's always good to ask if you can finance that piece of this deal as well. A lot of you guys are bringing deals to the table that are along the, these lines where the seller wants some cash to move, for example, and it may not be, this case was 10. It may be, I want three to move. Uh, well, where are you moving? I'm moving, you know, two blocks down. Well, it doesn't take $3,000 to move two blocks down. We'll get a kid in a van and a couple of kids from high school football team on Saturday and we'll move it for you. Um, and one of the ways that you can you know, rather than kind of shoving that up their tailpipe is say, listen, I can't give you three up front, but I can give you a thousand now, a thousand a month from now, and a thousand, you know, in two months from now, that type of thing. And so this would be a really cool technique uh, to, to use when you're trying to see if you can do these deals on as few a dollars out of pocket as possible. This would be a great technique to use. Always ask if you can get if you can divide up anything that you've got to pay for in cash into terms. And if you can do that, you'll find that your cash flow is improved dramatically. So this was essentially 25% of the entire cash that was going to need to go into this deal. And we were able to basically take 25% of the, the 40 that'll be necessary. And by the way, a lot of those repairs and a lot of the $10,000 of holding and carrying costs will be able uh, to be thrown into escrow. So realistically, we'll probably put $10,000 out of pocket. Um, $20,000 will go on to the HUD-1 for selling the property when the property gets sold so that we don't have to pay out of pocket. And you know, with the exception of probably four months at $4,000 total, so out of 40,000, we're gonna probably spend 14 to 15,000 cash on this deal. And you know, this thing's gonna turn around and make, uh, you know, what's the math? 100 and, 
130, last 20, um, 110, 100, uh, around 100, and with, with closing costs and everything, probably $90,000 on $14,000 cash out of pocket. That's a good deal. That's what you're looking for. And you guys have access to these deals all day long. Just try and negotiate every single piece of it, including the seller carryback portion. Um, you know, stretch it out. Can I pay you later? You know, a dollar today, a dollar next week, that kind of thing. So uh, that's part of the creative real estate, what we call transactional engineering. You guys should all take advantage of that. Bring your deals here. We can help you kind of put those things together if um, you're not sure how to how to put those together, how to offer them, those kind of things. But be thinking in your brains as you're you're going through this stuff instead of automatically just telling people uh no i can't do this um think in terms of you know writing it down bringing it to us and we'll see if we can't help you put something like this together um, these deals are doable and you know people are more flexible out there in the marketplace sellers are more flexible in the marketplace than you might really believe Obviously, you look at this most expensive house in the United States of America. These guys are in default with a huge amount of equity. You know, in theory, the, the house appraised for $500 million. They owe $165 million. Their debt is, you know, 33 cents on the dollar. And they're going to have to sell it at a fire sale to get the thing sold cash because they think they can find a buyer who's got $300 million laying around in their pocket. It's a crazy world out there, but this is the kind of thing we're going to see um, coming down the pike. So keep your eyes and ears open, um, keep your negotiation hat on, and be thinking of ways to transactionally engineer your way into a profit.